So I wanted to do a quick video about how to use FSD beta. Since so many people are getting FSD beta, let's just go over how to use it properly. So first things first, get onto the street before you turn it on. Don't turn it on in the parking lot. Parking lots are not officially supported. Sometimes you can kind of get it to work in a parking lot, but that's more experimental. So I recommend you get to the road like I am here, and then you turn it on actually once you get into the lane. So I'm gonna turn it on right now, and here we go. So the thing that I wanna stress, if you've seen a lot of my videos, is the way that I use the software in the video is not really how any normal person would use it in real life. Because this is an assistant for you, right? The idea is the car knows how to control itself and move the steering wheel and move the pedal, so why do I have to do it? So it can assist me in doing what I wanna do and I can, for example, give it guidance. I can turn the speed down, I can use the blinker, all that kind of stuff, but it's gonna do most of what it can do, go around that car, all of that stuff automatically. So I've given it a destination, I've told it where to go, and right now I'm just watching, I'm making sure it doesn't make any mistakes, but I don't actually have to use any of the controls. And this is fine for most of your driving, you're usually probably in a traffic scenario. This is really what you want. The car can probably be smoother, more cautious and more alert uh, than you can in really like sort of a stop and go traffic situation. So. For those kinds of situations where it's already better than us, we can use it, we can turn it on. And that's our choice, right? So this is the important thing as a driver, you have to exercise discretion in when to turn it on. When is it appropriate to turn it on and when is it not appropriate to turn it on? And you're gonna sort of build up a knowledge of where it works well, where it doesn't work well, and you're gonna probably wanna turn it on in the situations where the task is easy and you think you can handle it pretty well. If you're in the middle of Times Square and you're driving around, you that might not be the right place and time to use it. It may not do as well in that scenario. So you as the driver are exercising discretion in when you wanna let it control the car for you. And you're taking over at any time when there's something that you wanna do better. So for example, I'm not getting stuck or waiting at a traffic light or doing anything really stupid because I'm waiting for the software to do it. If there's any little correction I can make to do things better, then I can do it. Like let's say for example, there's some debris on the road, I can just quickly take over, go around it, and just like that, I can turn the software back on and now it's back in control. So this is really how you're gonna be happiest is hybrid control. The software is handling most things, but you are providing your input at times when the software is, well, when you could do something better than the software. And it's actually gonna note that input that you gave, and it's gonna take it into account in the future. Not necessarily explicitly, like it's not necessarily like it's gonna happen tomorrow, but in a, in a broad scale over large time horizons, they can start to see these issues and start to make the system more robust against them for a future update. All right, so we got a left turn here. Nailed it. So you can see it, you know, it does very well and it's gonna be great once they let expert users who have used autopilot for a long time reduce the nag. Um, because the nag is sort of totally superfluous. It's sort of this hand-holding thing that I think is, ooh, is important for new users. But uh, for expert users, they don't really need to be told uh, how often to do it. I, I think most of the time when I'm driving, I'll just put my hand like this and sort of let it touch the wheel by default. That not only is better for safety because I can react quicker, but it also just increases my comfort. It makes me feel safer 
that my hand is there on the wheels. When I make the video, I try and touch the wheel as little as possible because I want people to see that the software is actually driving the car and I'm always ready uh, to take the wheel and I'm able to really anticipate what's going to happen and if there's going to be an issue so I can uh, be ready to take, X ready to take over ahead of time. Okay, so there was somebody entering the roundabout there and it was pausing for them and they were waving at me to go while entering. So that's kind of a thing sometimes. If somebody's moving, it'll stop. And a lot of times people get impatient and they're moving and then it stops and then that frustrates them. But it thinks, you know, they're gonna go ahead or something. So again, you saw me right there in the roundabout when it was pausing as that guy was motioning for me to go. I used the accelerator, so I didn't have to disengage. I just pressed the accelerator to tell it to hurry up a little bit, and that input actually does come back to them. So it's not as strong of a signal as a disengagement, but they do sort of get that. So yeah, you as the driver should be watching very closely, watching what the system's doing, and anticipating potential issues, right? As you get good at using the system, you're gonna know about the issues before they even happen, and you're gonna take over before there's even any issue. So for example, you may have a spot in your day-to-day -day drives that are uh, where there, it has a problem every day. So instead of letting that problem happen, you just sort of disengage and do it yourself and then turn it back on afterwards. And maybe every, every once in a while with a new update or something or every couple weeks, you can try and see if it's improved, but you start with the expectation that it's not going to work uh, properly at that location. Is there a little kid standing in the middle of the road? Shit. So yeah, when I make a video, what I'm really just trying to show is how much the system can already do today. And just to give an overview sort of at a high level and say, look, it's already doing, you know, 90, 95% of the driving and it can handle some really challenging scenarios. But then I get these people who are angry at me and they're saying, oh, you know, you're a liar. It's just, it didn't work like that for me. And they don't understand that, yeah, of course, it doesn't work perfectly for me all the time either. This is still a driver assistance system that you have to watch today, but it's the foundation for something that I think is going to be more reliable than humans with time. I think deep learning has that potential and computer vision has that potential. Um, just watching it evolve, that it's pretty clear that's the case now. And yeah, it's not gonna work in every place, at every time, in every scenario, but there's a lot more headroom for it to improve. Oh God. There's a lot more headroom for it to improve in those scenarios that I think people don't really understand. Oh, oops, I forgot this is the destination. So I'll have it continue. This is sort of a challenging street. I wanted to pick sort of a more difficult street so that I could maybe have an example of something where I have to take over. Here we got a UPS driver. 
looks like he's unloading or loading some boxes into the truck. Almost ran over grandma. Dan O'Dowd was so excited. He's like, yes, run her over. And then when it didn't run over, he went, ah. But anyway, this video didn't really show what I was trying to show because the software's so good. But the point I'm trying to make is take over often, right? The goal is not to have a zero takeover drive. The goal is to arrive at your destination smoothly and comfortably and enjoy the trip, right? So if there's something like this, that's actually a scenario where I should have taken over maybe and, and continued rather than letting that man cross the street, for example. So if you're using it correctly, you're switching off in between manual driving and autopilot to just drive as smoothly as com and comfortably as possible. You're not over relying on the system or letting it do stupid things. So like, okay, here's a good example. So this guy's reversing. Now this thing wants to wait for it to reverse and it's gonna be super slow. So this is like a scenario in real life where I might take control just because I can do it faster. And then, okay, maybe like this guy and this cyclist is making me a little nervous, so I'm gonna do this manually. Maybe have a little fun with it. And then you just turn on autopilot. And you can see there why FSD is so much safer. When I'm on FSD, it's such a safe driver. It's stopping fully at stop signs down to zero. It, when it sees a yellow light, it slows down. I speed up, right? It drives at a reasonable speed, you know, close to the speed limit. Um, was actually going three, oh, three miles over because I told it to, but, you know, much closer to the speed limit than what I do. So, yeah, I think this is a huge safety benefit. You know, maybe it's even saved my life because the way I drive, I could probably... Uh, put myself in danger uh, through sort of unsafe behavior. But with this thing, it makes very safe conservative choices. So yeah, don't rely on the system too much. I think the happy point is like 80% FSD, 20% manual driving. Do the things that you can do better yourself and then switch back and forth between the system as you think uh, is needed. So those are my tips for you. If you have any questions or um, comments about how you think FSD should be used or how you're using it, uh, let me know. Oh, and one more thing I'll say, the report button, uh, a lot of people have lost the report button and they're asking, oh, is it still gonna get my data about the things that I'm doing, the issues I'm seeing? Yeah, if you don't have the report data, it'll still collect every all the data automatically using triggers that Tesla has set, and you don't need to worry about it. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy beta riding.